this is the first time someone's held a gun to my head. You're gonna make me late. And I hate being late. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Christy. This is Matt. Bibbs is gonna join us to talk about the transporter refueled. Don't call it a comeback. It's not, right? It is, is it a reboot? not a comeback. It is a reboot. Ooh. It's a reboot? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, this movie is uh, about uh, our same character that we've seen in previous Transporters films and in the uh, TV show. Um, Frank is a guy who drives a German sports car, in this case an Audi. Uh, he was driving a BMW in the first film, uh, but then he switched to Audis because Audi commercials. Because <laughs> they um, all the movies right. right. So uh, this is a movie that he is a transporter. He signs up to uh, drive you around or whatever package you need, no questions asked, and whatever it takes, he'll get it there. He's better than FedEx. Uh, and he also has this magical car <laughs> that no matter what you do to it, you can hit fire hydrants, you can drive through fences, you can scrape other cars, and the car is apparently made of adamantium because it still looks perfect. Damn, Let's I gotta get an Audi. <laughs> gotta get an Audi. An Audi S8. <laughs> oh look, uh, Miss Unknown is calling again. And what would make you think that Unknown is a miss? I'm just guessing. Okay, Dad. Is this the transporter? Where are the packages? What's this? You should go. Out the car, all of you now. No one's getting out of the car. Now drive. Seatbelts now. work together again in the future. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Mediterranean bank has been robbed before, but never like this. The driver, he's known as a transporter. We will make him pay. May I be of some assistance? Hello, Frank. Who is this? You and your friends took something from me, and I've taken something from you. I'll give you 12 hours to find your father before I kill him. So uh, I did not like this movie. Yeah. I was now. I will say yes. You're right. There were there were some <laughs> you over know the top what I'm laughs. Say. You know what I'm gonna there, say. Yes, you and I sat next to each other in the screening, and there were some points at which I was laughing, yeah. and I thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, and there were some. There were a couple of good scenes, but they made me think of some of the other transporter movies, especially the first one, where these these great over the top scenes, one after another, mm -hmm. and this one has, you know, it's only like a little slice of what I think we used to see when Luke Besson was producing these great movies, and you had Statham doing these these great over-the-top action sequences. Well, that makes this a big one, difference. This one's yeah. a huge, it's a letdown. You know, if you had started this fresh, and it wasn't The Transporter, it might be a little bit, I'd be a little bit more open to it, but I think that the deck is stacked against you. Even when you're doing something where the consistency of these films, the bar is set so low, I think part of the problem is the lead here doesn't have the charisma. Right. I think Ed Screen. Screen. He's, he's been done Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's, on, he's, he's briefly on Game of Thrones briefly. and he left to do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> that that's a, I don't know that that's a good You know, Ray Stevenson is in this who yes. I think has more charisma than the rest of the cast put together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of a, a mistake because your secondary character is kind of stealing the movie in a way that doesn't make all that much sense. And then the story here is you know, Frank gets our, you know, gets this job, and it turns out maybe not everything is supposed to be what it is, which is what happens in all of these movies. Yeah. But then, like, he keeps falling for the same shit over and over again. It's like, how are you still in business? And his dad, who was supposed to be this like former British, right? Secret former Service James Bond, right? Keeps like getting kidnapped. Well, right. Like these. Why guys, do you keep getting kidnapped? So you keep they keep <laughs> kidnapping his dad, and you think, oh man. Big mistake, <laughs> right? Like this right. is gonna be, and then he's fine with it. Mm -hmm. He's just like, yeah, they are all hot. All all hot. There <laughs> is the so they get involved in this hot prostitute heist, three musketeers scam, which three makes less sense in the movie <laughs> than it I love does that in that they're sentence. They're trying to quote Alexander Dumas mm -hmm. on this, like, mm -hmm. oh well, we'll raise our pedigree here if we start right. quoting something good. Like, no, no, no. 
Don't do that. And they had no. the book lying around. In case they, you're wondering, they, we actually read the book. They cut to Here an insert is. of the book, just in case we, we weren't picking up on it. And their whole plot, by the way, their whole plot is like it's super complicated, but they don't let us in on it until really late, so it's hard to even latch on to what's happening and why we should even give a damn. And then by the end of the movie, it turns out their entire plot could have been reduced to, all we got to do is just kill all these guys and steal their thumbs. Right. You could have just done that. Right. Like None of this whole movie was necessary oh, yeah. thumb at severing. all. Oh, yeah. Okay. None of it was, at, was necessary at all. And then, like, even just, there's just so much stuff in this movie that there's good dumb and there's bad dumb. There's there's different kinds of dumb. Some dumb is more entertaining right. than others. The first two Transporter movies, wonderfully dumb. Mm -hmm. I love the first two Transporter movies. The third Transporter movie, evil. It's a no, terrible. It's, not evil. it's no, so no, incompetently no. produced and written, and yeah, the way that, that one, they that and they sexually this one. And, no, it is not. Yeah. I just watched it. They <laughs> sexually violate Frank Martin. He is he is actually like assaulted out of homosexuality in that movie. It's gross. And now here it's just generic, except for bad plot points. Yeah. Like um, uh, the movie opens with like completely taking down the entire prostitution racket in the French Riviera by like shooting two guys and saying I'm in charge now, and then putting a 12 year old on the street who's played by a 30 year old, and right. then 15 years later she looks great. The years have been kind. <laughs> like she really, and then and then like oh god. And then there's a bit where one of them gets shot. One of them gets shot in the oh, stomach. Oh, God, that was messed up. And then was... they have, like, emergency cobweb triage. And then in the next scene, she's having giggly three-way sex. Maybe the cobwebs really worked. We don't know that the cobweb-sugar yeah, combination does not work. Have you ever tried it? You know, someone know. shoot me in the chest. I won't tell you. Like, no the there's, there's parts of this movie that I started thinking, like, did someone... Dropped this whole script, mm -hmm. and pages went everywhere, <laughs> and they put it back together in the best way they thought, and they were still missing five or six pages, and things were out of order. Because yeah. Yeah. there's things that happen in this movie, and you're kind of like, wait, what? Like, yeah. what the? It, it, things really seem what? out of order. Things, it, it's a mess. This movie's a mess, and I don't think even the action is that particularly well staged. There's, there's a couple, a couple of cool sequences. Couple, but there's a bit where he ghost rides the whip. While, right. while, while, while right. hitting people, that's kind of fun. Like, that was all right. I'll the give him thing, that. The thing with the fire hydrants is kind of fun. Yep. The thing yes. with the jet ski on dry land is kind of fun. But they, I laughed right. out loud but, at right. that. But that's, that's like fun. three little <laughs> tiny secrets. Here's the worst thing about that jet ski bit, though. They did that in the Transporter 2 already. Oh. Yeah. That was in the Transporter 2. Right. The opening of this movie where people like try to like steal his car while he's in the parking garage, right. that's, that's also from Transporter right. 2, but it was better in Transporter 2 because those characters had more, they were more interesting and there was a better fight right. sequence. It's a weird repetition in this. And it's not like reboot where like, oh, well, we got to give them what we want. We got to re remake these classic movies. So maybe but, they dropped all of the Transporter scripts. Yeah. <laughs> and put them together as best they could. It feels That's, like they took a leftover script from the Transporter TV series, which is better than this movie, by the uh, way. And they just threw it into a movie and added a couple of bigger stuff. Yeah, not that you necessarily go to a Transporter movie or anything of the Europa Corps genre for the acting, but, you know, Jason Statham brought a, a ton of presence and a right. ton of swagger, as he does to everything. And this guy is really pretty. And... Mm -hmm. um, and right. wears right. the suits well, but there's no there there. No, and honestly, I think. honestly, I want to see a movie about Ray Stevenson's character, mm -hmm. yeah. Frank Senior. That's yeah. the movie I want to see because that's the guy that's interesting. That's he's like a retired James Bond type, mm -hmm. you know, and he's still got that charm and he's very much channeling, God, almost uh, um, the second, uh, third, um, almost Roger Moore. Like he's almost oh. doing Roger Moore. Like yeah, you know, calling everyone wink, dear. Wink to yeah, that. and yes. he's he's still very. You know, kind of glamorous and and still very, you know, he's not getting down and dirty. He's, you know, I liked that character, and I kind of want to see a movie about him. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to be in an action movie where I'm more interested in the secondary character. Well, that reminded me a lot so, also of um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, right? Because yeah, he's calling right. him Junior the whole time, yeah. and this guy's supposed to be a badass. He's like, Dad. Speaking of the whole Europa Cup genre, I mean, like they've kind of defined this new sort of action movies for dads kind of thing <laughs> with all the Taken Mason. movies and, right. and so on. The idea that you know the 40 to 50 year old guy who's going to protect his family by being a badass is they just sort of like did the same thing except they made the son. The protagonist, right. it's, it's more of like a good day to die hard. Right. Except they think Jai Courtney is the hero. He's not the hero. Okay. Jai Courtney Camille Delamar, we should mention, is the person who directed this. He has edited some of these movies previously. He also directed Brick Mansions. Didn't see it. Did you not? No, I like the Last original one. That's kind of... Um, 
right? Yeah. Wasn't that? Paul I think it was last technically movie? the last one. Yeah. No, I miss I missed that one because I it, just I like the original. I, I mean, look, like really I love it. a good schlock Luc Besson production. Oh, but yeah. This is not one of the better examples of that. All so, right, definitely like, not. Well, then what are your numbers, gentlemen? And four and a half. Four and a half. It's bleh. Out of ten. It's bleh, out of ten. Yeah. Sorry. What is yours? Uh, I give it a three. I'm saying this movie stinks. I'm saying four. Because I laughed here and there. It was good to hang out. We had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> There's some fun, dumb stuff in it, but not consistent. Yeah, but we we'd had, we had still hadn't had enough booze. We'd had a couple of drinks at a time. With it was dinner. not enough. With dinner. Right. <laughs> right. Three drinks, no dinner. That would have made this a lot right. better. Two is the over-under. So um, 3.8 is our number. Where right. is it like in tomato 14 land? 14% on the tomato. Is it? Right okay. Now. It'll change. Something like that, yeah. So this is, yeah, this is like in the 12 14% range. Before we go, is it zero? <laughs> What would you send your grandma to this weekend? Straight out of Compton. <laughs> <I agree>. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>